because I haven't started yet, so that's why I never record yet. So, all right, when you look at this uh, Excel sheet here, this is actually a sample of uh, what you should do for your assignment. For those of you who just get back your assignment and you have questions to ask me, and uh, those who are not happy with your marks, most of you did the mistake in this section. All right, so let me brief you a bit about the assignment. Again, you have two questions there. So most of you, for question one, you did not comply with the CFA standard to solve the issue. All right, you are just describing each and every one of the standard, most of you. So what you need to do is you need to talk about standard 4A and standard 4Cs. Okay, then when you come to question two, you are supposed to use tables such as this, or you can use your own methods to show the OCF, the NPV, again, okay, and of course, to find the BCR. All right. So a lot of you did pretty well on these three sections, but you've forgotten about which uh, project will be the best according to rating. So you need to show which one is the best and then follow to the worst. All right. Rank them in, uh, in uh, positions. And the second part of question two, that is where most of the students lose all your marks. All right. They are allocated to you 15, uh, 13 marks there. 7 plus 6, 13 marks there. So it's not sufficient for you to just choose uh, one or two projects. You're supposed to show the diversifiable and indiversifiable combination uh, for this potential here. Although it's not being questioned in the question, you are supposed to know it when you see that marks is given, is 13 marks allocated. So you need to separate it into two sections, diversifiable and indiversifiable. What are the combinations? Explain it. All right. Some give out the uh, numbers, but no reasoning. So it does not show that your understanding on the choices of your options. So this is uh, sort of the breakdown of your of your assignments that some of you are interested to know further. So if you have any more questions, you can always drop an email to me and make an appointment to see me then. Okay, so let's come to today's tutorial then. I hope that you guys already got your, got your questions with you, well prepared. So I'll go through the question together with you. Okay, as we go through, I'll explain what does the question means. Okay. So when you look at question number one here, after spending six million on research and development, Biotech Pharma Limited has decided to embark into a manufacturing the new drug for cold treatment. So BPL would rent a warehouse for this project. The next year, so that means on year one onwards, the rental charge on the warehouse is expected to be 120,000. So pay close attention here, it does not stop there. The rental for first year is 120,000 and thereafter the rent is expected to grow in line with inflation rate of 3% a year. Okay, so in other meaning, in other words here, this uh, rental will be incremental by 3% every single year after. So in addition, the proposal foresees an investment in equipment of 1.5 million. This is your initial capital of 1.5 million dollar. This could be depreciated for tax purposes using the straight line method over 10 years. Okay, so you know, something that we've already been uh, doing for the past few tutorials. $1.5 million initial capital, you'll be depreciated straight line methods over 10 years. Okay, so you must find out the depreciation value first per year. So just take 1.5 divided by 10, 150,000 per year. However, BPL expects to terminate the project at the end of five years. So after five years, full stop, they want to close. They don't want to uh, continue anymore. And to resell the equipment in year five for $500,000. Salvage value, $500,000. Finally, the project required an initial investment in working capital of $150,000. So your NWC, okay, $150,000. Thereafter, the working capital is forecasted to be 10% of sales in each of years one to four. So from year one to year four, your working capital will be based on your sales amount. Okay. So production cost is estimated to be $3.10. This is your costing per dose. And the drug will be sold at $4. This is the market price, the selling price. There are no marketing expenses. Sales forecasts are given in the following table. Again, I already put it down here, the sales forecast, 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.72, all these are in millions. Okay, so this is 600,000, 650, 720, 800, and 750,000 uh, doses. So the firm pay tax at 25% and the required return of the project is 
Okay. So this um mostly the information given to you. There are a lot of information here. Right. And I also really explain one by one, word by word to you to give you know what, what does it mean there. So how are you gonna fit it in here to calculate the NPV? So as we did before, to calculate your NPV, first you need to calculate your uh, net in, you need to find out your uh, net income, your OCF, okay, your incremental networking capital, and finally you can calculate your NPV with your calculator or even with your uh, scientific calculator. Okay, so let's start. All right, so this table roughly looks like this. Okay, and these are the doses in million. These are the ones that you need to use it to calculate. All right, 600,000, 650, 720, 800, and 750 for each year, year one to year five. So first of all, calculate your sales revenue first. How to calculate your sales revenue? Okay. So following the calculator, 600,000, multiply by the price. The market price is $4. Okay, so you manage to get 2.4. <clears throat> All right, two point four. So this is not uh, this is not right. So you change it to I need to type it like instead of better six hundred because the back zero are being written here. So simplify six hundred multiplied by four. So two point four million. Okay, two point four million. Then here we're gonna be six fifty multiplied by four. Two point six. Seven twenty multiplied by four. 800, 800 multiplied by 4, and lastly, 750 multiplied by 4. So these are the total sales. Okay, total sales for each year from year 1 to year 5. All right, next, you can count the operating cost. So this operating cost is the number of doses multiplied by your uh, production cost. So each dose is three dollar and ten cent. Okay. So what you're gonna do is take six hundred thousand, multiply by three dollar and ten cents. You get one eight six zero. Okay. Six fifty multiply by three dollar and ten cents. Two zero one five. Seven twenty multiply by three dollar and ten cents. You get two two three two. Two point two three million, huh? So all this is a million, you see. And last, uh, not last yet, 800 multiplied by 310, 2.48 million. And lastly, 750 multiplied by 3.1. Okay, so you already got your sales revenue, your operating cost. So it comes to depreciation. So just now when we say depreciation, I told you the initial capital is 1.5 million. All right, 1.5 million initial capital. Depreciated across 10 years, straight line to zero. So it's 150,000 per year for depreciation. Okay, so depreciation will be the same across all. 150, 150, 150, 150, and 150. Okay, rental, just now I tell you, is 120,000. But it will be incremental by... <coughs> 3%. Again, incremental by 3% each year due to inflation. So 120 multiplied by 1.03. Oops. Okay. Take this figure, multiply by 1.03. So for you, I uh, don't think you are allowed to use any Excel in the exam. So please keep yourself updated. Go and ask uh, your module later, see whether are you allowed to do so. If you're not allowed to, then you need to use your calculator and uh, type out the figure here. Okay, to get the updates from your module leader. All right. Okay, 135.06. So once you got all this, then it's simple. You know, the next thing you need to do is to find the earning before tax. Okay, to get the earning before tax, just use the sales revenue. All these are actually revision to you guys, so you shouldn't be uh, shocked to see all these uh, questions actually. So, no rocket science here. 
you get 270. Repeat this for year two up to year five. Okay. All right, 311.4. Next, 2.88 million minus 2.23. Minus 150,000, minus 122, 27, yeah, 370.69. Next, repeat it one by one. So take your time. Usually this is a 25 mark question. So you now show all of this. And then you can see, I put the marks there also for those uh, important points that you need to find. So one small mistake on these uh, actions will cost you getting the wrong answers. Okay, so once you got that, the tax given to you in this question is 25%. 25% of your earning before taxes. So you just put it 0 0.25 of this. Back across. Yep, these are the taxes amount. Okay, this is the tax. All right, then you can get your net income now. Okay, so take the earning before tax minus of your taxes, you can get your net income. Okay. Two zero two point five. Yeah. All right. So up until here, you realize that I did not allocate any marks or no marks are being allocated for the top section until OCF. So for you to get OCF means every action before that must be accurately calculated. All right. So the marks are given to OCF. And here is five marks, one mark each. All right. To get OCF, you take a net income plus a depreciation. So this is a revision to you. Hopefully you still remember. Net income plus depreciation. Okay. Net income plus your depreciation. Yep. All right. That's your highlighted rate. That means there's marks given here on this section. Next is on capital spending. So this investment has an initial capital of 1.5 million. Okay. So 1500 negative. Initial investment, you need to be negative. Okay? Next, it's your networking capital. All right? So your networking capital here is 150. Okay? Over here, you just want to calculate what is the networking capital. Because based on the question, they tell you that the forecasted networking capital for year 1 to 4 is 10% of sales. So 0 0.1 multiplied by your sales. For year one to year four. Check the cost to year four. All right. There will not be any working capital on year five because this is the year that you sell off. Again, you sell it off. So no working capital then. Next, incremental. So basically, minus 150. The difference between the first year and the, zero, uh, and the year zero. All right. Negative 90. Negative 20. Negative 28, negative 32. And lastly, on the final year, you'll get back all the NWCs, all your working capital. Okay, so now the next headache here is the ATSW, ATSV, sorry. <laughs> ATSV. So the formula for ATSV, I already put there also. The formula for your ATSV is salvage value minus salvage value minus book value multiplied by tax. So this is the formula. Okay. So the problem here is you don't know what is the book value. All right. You don't know what is the book value. Okay. So to count the book value for now. Oops. So book value. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I did something wrong. 
Yes. To count your book value, it's equivalent to your whole initial investment minus of the depreciation year. Okay? Minus of the depreciation year. So your initial investment here is 1.5 million. All right. So it has been five years. Okay, it has been five years and it, each year depreciation is $150,000. So according to your accounting recording, your value of this equipment is worth $750,000 now on the fifth year. Okay, on the fifth year, it's worth $750,000. So when you fill in into the equation, as we, the service value given to you, 500,000 minus service value, 500,000 again, minus 750, okay, minus 750 times the tax. The tax is 25%. So negative, negative here will give you a positive figure of 562,500. Okay, 562.5. So you can key in here, 562.5. Okay, 562.5. <laughs> all right. After having all this, you need to count the incremental cash flow after tax. Okay, so incremental cash flow, capital spending and incremental networking capital, this will be negative 1650. Over here, you take your <clears throat> you take your OCF, okay, your OCF, deduct your uh, incremental networking capital again. So you will get 262.5. Okay, this one will be 363.55. So just take OCF minus of your incremental. Uh, 428 minus 28 is 400.02. Four seven nine point one five minus thirty two. Again, you get four four seven point one five. And finally, here you will total up four four two plus three twenty plus five sixty. Okay, no no negative sign there, so it's gonna be add up four four two plus three twenty plus five sixty. Okay, so this is the sum of. One three two four point nine five. All right, one three two four point nine five, and here carry six marks. Okay, so up until here it carry six marks. So the next process that you need to do is to find NPV at ten percent. Okay, NPV at ten percent. So those of you who are using a financial calculator, so you need to key in. Uh, we do the manual way first. NPV negative. 1650000 okay 1.65 million plus 263 over 1 plus r 0 0.1 now uh, power 1 and 364 uh, take back the figure oops so 262.5 363.55 Two six two point five, three six three point five five, one point zero one power of two. Continue one by one, four hundred thousand. One point one power of three. 447150 power of 4 and lastly 1324.95 one, 1324.950 1.1 1 .1 power of 5 find your NPV okay start plotting your calculator and see whether can you find the NPV or not 
for those who use the financial calculator, your cash flow at time zero, negative plus minus negative, huh? 1650000. Cash flow one, 262500. 363550. So the F, you don't touch it. Keep it as one. Okay? Don't go and put the frequency. All right? You don't you ignore the frequency because there's not repeating on the uh, cash flow. So 400, 200, 447, 150. And lastly, one three two four nine fifteen. I Y ten percent. Compute and TV. Tell me what do you get? Okay. Tell me what do you get? Three one seven, yes. Three one seven seven three one point zero three. Very good. Okay, you get three one seven seven three one point zero three. Okay, very well done. So this is a positive NPV. All right. So what is the decision to be made here? All right. So basically, once you complete three one seven, you can just key in here. Three one seven point seven three positive NPV. So based on the calculation in A, should BPL proceed with the proposal? Give reason to your answer. So to answer this, this is actually usually carry two marks. Huh? So this whole question carry 25 marks. Okay. So part B here usually two marks. One, should you accept this proposal and give a reason to it? So to accept this proposal, yes, you should accept because it's a positive NPV. Full stop. Done. Two marks. Free. Okay. So it's a positive NPV. You can accept the NPV. Then that's it. Two marks given to you. Full stop. Okay. Up until here, you have any difficulty understanding or not? Are you guys okay? Can follow, cannot follow. Hello. Can follow. Okay, can follow. Very good. Okay, only lean, only lean here. The rest of don't go away. All right, so good. Never mind. If the rest of you have issues or difficulty understanding, you can always drop in on the chat box. If not, you can watch back the playback. Okay, so the next question here. All right, I need to turn my whiteboard. Okay, <clears throat> so this next question here is a very normal question, a question that we did before on sensitivity. All right, consider a four year project with the following information initial fixed asset investment, okay, is $480,000, straight line depreciation to zero over four years, life zero salvage value, price 37, variable cost 23, fixed cost 195, quantity sold 90,000, tax rate 34%. How sensitive is OCF in quantity sold? Okay, write down all the information here. Four years straight line, all right, initial capital. Initial capital here, 480,000. Four years straight line, 120,000 per year depreciation. Okay, next. Zero service value, no care, who, nobody cares. Price. Price at $37. Variable cost, $23. Fixed cost, $195,000. Quantity sold, $90,000. Tax rate, 0.34. Okay? All the information given are here. Are already simplified here. So now, we want to find the sensitivity of OCF towards quantity sold. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, you need to know the OCF formula using the tax shield approach. Something that we did before, something very easy also. 
So OCR equals C one. OCR is equal to price price minus variable cost multiplied by quantity minus fixed cost close bracket one minus t okay plus t multiplied by depreciation uh, hopefully you still remember this formula okay hopefully you still remember this formula all right so replace it into the formula price 37 variable cost 23 quantity 90000 fixed cost 195 like 1 minus 0 0.34 plus 0 0.34 multiplied by your depreciation that you calculated Hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, so this is your initial OCF seven four three seven hundred. All right, seven four three seven hundred. You have to count sensitivity now, right? So you need to assume changes on quantity. Okay, changes on quantity. So you change. Now you do OCF new okay everything remain the same price 37 variable cost 23 quantity change let's say 91,000. you want to change whatever number is up to you okay it's up to you ah uh, 91,000 minus 195 so i assume i'm changing it to 91,000. 1,000 extra 0 0.66 plus 0 0.34 120 thousand my new ocf now is 752 940. 752, 940. Okay. With this, you can find the sensitivity. So how to find the sensitivity? Changes on OCF divided by changes on quantity. So take the old quantity, uh, sorry, the old OCF minus the new OCF over old quantity minus new quantity so in the end you will get negative negative figure negative negative become positive positive nine dollar and 24 cents per unit so every one unit increment there will be an increase of ocf by nine dollar and 24 cents we did this before again okay. all the questions today that we discussed we did this before we did all of this before in our tutorial questions. So can follow, cannot follow. Can follow. Very good. Okay. Can follow means very, very good. All right. Hopefully this will be with you until your exam. Okay. So let's try the next question here on scenario analysis. All right. This question is telling you here. So we need to explain the changes. Yes, of course. Every increment of one unit will be an increment of $9.24 in OCF. You need to explain it that way. You need to tell it like that. The sensitivity of OCF will be every one unit increment on quantity will be an increment of $9.24 in the operating cash flow. You take negative, you take 80,000 and I got a negative figure. Of course, lah. Every decrease in one queen, uh, every decrease in one uh, unit will be a decrease of nine dollar twenty four cent one. Correct or not, Kylie? When you put eighty thousand, what do you get? Negative nine point two four. Am I right? Negative one point one two. How come? Can you use back the same same method or not? So it should be uh, your your case here. Okay, it should be 743 700 minus the 80k one. I don't know how much. Okay, over 90,000 minus 80,000. Hmm. 
six five one three hundred. Okay, six five one three hundred. Let me see my calculator. Seven four three seven hundred minus six five one three hundred. Ninety two thousand four hundred divided by ten thousand. Nine point two four one. No, you cannot use eighty minus ninety thousand. Then it's wrong one. You see, you take the new one. Uh, you sorry, you take the old OCF. This is the old quantity. Then this is the new OCF. This is the new quantity. Ah, must must be same. Ah. Okay, this segment is their side. This one is another question already. So you do this, you also get positive nine point two four. Confirm one. I just tried. Ah, you try it again. Okay, you try it again. Confirm get nine point two four one. Will not run one. Confirm correct one. All right. Okay. Can ah. So the rest of you can try also. Your friend are very exploratory. She tried ATK and then she tried. So please make sure this is your old OCF. This is your new OCF. Quantity also here old then here old lah. Don't go and rotate. You rotate then something wrong already. Cannot go and change. Okay. Left side is the old figure, right side is the new figure. That's it. Make sure you do according to this principle. You will not do wrong. Okay. Let's look back at question three. So we are not using percentage change in the variable. Percentage change. In the... You want to convert into percentage change also can, but the question did not ask that one. They asked you the sensitivity you need. So you just need to you need to tell about the changes. How sensitive in each quantity changes. Okay, how does it affect your OCF? So you can just mention, yeah, every unit you add nine dollar twenty four cents. Okay, I know in tutorial we do percentage, but this question they just want you to tell about the sensitivity. Never ask it to change in percentage or whatsoever. Then no need to change. All right. Okay. So by the way, ah, uh, all these questions are just uh, practicing purposes, ah. Uh. It does not uh, resemble any segment of the exam. So the exam questions, I don't know what is coming out. Okay, I really don't know what is coming out. All right, you make sure you know how to use all this information. You know how to use your MCA, uh, MACR table. You know how to use your financial calculator. Uh, all those will be sufficient. Okay, so let's see on question number three here on scenario analysis. So you are a financial analysis for a tennis racket manufacturer. The company is using is considering using a graphite light material in its tennis racket. So the company has estimated the information in the following table about the market for a racket with new material. The company expects to sell the racket for six years. The equipment required by the project has no salvage value. The required rate of return for project of this type is thirteen percent, and the company has a forty percent tax rate. Should you recommend the project? Yeah. So look at the table. The information on the table is very very important here. Okay, they are telling you three different market condition: pessimistic, expected, and optimistic. So different condition of the market will have a different market size, different market share, different selling price, different variable cost, and even different fixed and initial investment. So figures are different. So how do you want to recommend? Should you execute this project or not? It's only one project, one project with three market condition. Okay, so you want to see can you, uh, run this project or not, or should you invest in this project or not? So let's let's try to figure this out. Back to our Excel page. Okay, so are we ready like that? This is uh, somehow. The way you want to structure it to find your OCF first, then you find your NPV. Okay, so the pessimistic condition here: how many units per year are being sold? So the number to to get this number is very simple. Market size is one zero five zero zero. Okay, one zero five zero zero zero. Put an equal there. So this is the total number of uh, market. This is market size here. And in a pessimistic condition, you manage to get twenty percent market share only. 
So this is the amount of sales you get under the pessimistic condition. Under expect under expected condition, they are a size of hundred and twenty thousand. But then your market share uh, market share also goes up, so down twenty three percent. Next is one hundred and forty five thousand of the market size, and your market share is twenty five percent. So increasing number in different condition. All right, now you want to find the revenue. You are selling twenty one thousand unit per year. And each unit under the pessimistic condition is sold at one hundred and fifty. Oh, forgot to equal again. So in the end, three point one five million. Okay, three point one five million. Next, selling twenty seven thousand six hundred at one five five per unit. It's all given to you, ah, in the question. So I hope that you have the question with you. All right, this one thirty six thousand two hundred fifty multiplied by one six one five million plus. Next is on the variable cost. So variable cost, you take the unit per year, multiply by three dollar and ten cent. Okay, three dollar and ten cent because that's your Uh, cost. Okay, is it three dollar ten cents? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Three dollar ten cents is the first question. So this is variable cost here. Variable cost per unit is one zero four. Ah, my mistake. One zero four. Hmm. Twenty seven thousand six hundred multiplied by variable cost ninety nine dollar. Three six two fifty. Multiply by variable cost of ninety eight dollar. Next is of fixed cost. Fixed cost is the same. Just copy paste on it. Nine six five zero 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 nine twenty zero 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 eight ninety zero zero zero. Ah, depreciation again need to count. So initial investment for persist mistake is one point nine million. Okay, and it's over six years. Ah, forgot to put equal again. So three hundred and sixteen thousand three hundred sixty-six per year depreciation for pessimistic condition. For expected condition, the initial investment is one point eight million divided by six, three hundred thousand. And of course, this one is at one point seven million divided by six. Okay. So after having all this information, you can find your EBT. Your earning before tax, okay. Earning before tax is basically equals of your revenue minus EC minus FC minus depreciation. Okay. Repeat for of the uh, expected condition. And lastly. Is on your optimistic condition. Done. Okay. Taxes is forty percent of this, so just take zero point zero point four of this. Okay, this one easy for me. Okay, just drag it across. As you can see, the tax here is still negative figure. Ah. Huh? Ah, uh, it's negative figure. Taxable income is negative here in pessimistic scenario. So we are assuming there's tax credit, okay? Tax credit or tax refund somehow. So negative, ah, uh, this negative figure minus this negative figure, negative negative become positive. So your net income will be better here. Oh. Hmm. This is negative. Ah. Uh. Okay. So this end up become here equal to. Minus tax cost. All right. And lastly, to count your OCF. OCF means taking your net income, okay, net income, plus back your depreciation. 
Ha, apa guru nama dia? Alright. Done. Okay. Up until here. I think this is the house school. We only seen all these people. So up until here, I think there shouldn't be any problem. So the most important thing, you already found your OCF. After having your OCF, now is the time you count your MPV. Alright. This is the time you want to count your MPV. So MPV of persist mistake. Alright. Okay. Initial capital. 1.9 million to so negative 1.9 million plus your cash flow 127266.67 multiplied by PVIFA okay of 13% and for six years. Hmm. All right. Those who use financial calculator, very easy. Financial calculator, life will be easier. C0 plus minus 1.9 million. C01, 127266.67. Frequency of cash flow 1, 6 times. Interest rate 13%. Compute NPV. Okay. Repeat this for expected and optimistic. So for purposes mistake, you should be getting negative 1391. 245.16. Okay. Continue this for expected negative 1.8 million plus your cash flow 495.16 multiplied by PBIFA 13% and 6. So I'm not going to show you how to copy VIFA yeah? factorization. You should be able to know already yeah, by now. Okay. So for expect for expected one, you will get a uh, NPV of 180,226.26. Positive. Very good. And lastly, NPV of optimistic, negative 1.7 million plus cash flow 9495.33. PVIFA, 13% and 6. So this will give you positive result. <coughs> 2 million, 96,000, 006.65. So these are the three NPVs that you get. Okay. So now the you need to make a decision. Should we recommend this project or not? Or should we uh, work with this project or not? Okay? So, come back to this question here. You look at three conditions on the persist mistake, expected and optimistic. Expected and optimistic shows a positive NPV. So, two out of three conditions is still give you a positive NPV. So, in that case, you can consider this company should probably should probably accept the project because only one third of the condition you will get an NPV. The other two third of the condition you have no issue. Okay, so up until here, do I have any questions from you guys? Is there any rocket science going on here? No? Yes, no, no, yes. Yeah? No one. Uh, I see no question. No question. Very good. Okay. So those who have difficulty or still digesting, I hope that uh, you can watch it. I will upload it on YouTube later. You can watch it. All right. Try to understand it. If worst case scenario, you, you cannot get it, please send an email to me. Okay. Send an email to me. All right. And also a reminder to those who haven't completed the PS for me, I still lack of numbers. On participation so please please go and do and complete it for me you want to complain you want to whine up to you doesn't matter to me so i just want to reach the target that's all so please help me to do that all right okay so continue with my canvas here okay we're not going to use any of the excel anymore i already deleted it 
So we'll come to question number four here. Question number four regarding WACC. So question number four is a very, very common question being asked in most of the finance units. Okay, so let's see these questions and break it down together. So BNB Bank has the following capital structure. <coughs> debt. Two kinds of debt. The first debt is 10,000 bonds. 10,000 bonds with a coupon rate of 10% and a current price quote of 119.73. The bonds have 20 years to maturity. Okay. Bond 2, 150,000 zero coupon bonds with a price quote of 29.5 and 25 years to maturity. Coupon payment for both bonds are semi-annually. So write down the information here. 10,000 bond with coupon rate of 10% semi-annually. So your payment it's 0 0.1 divided by 2 times 1,000. So it's around $50. $50 payment okay, per and semi-annually. The current price is 119.73. So this is 119.73%. So present value is 119.73% of 1,000. So this is 1197.3 present value. Bonds future value is always 1000, so no need headache. And then period 20 years to maturity, but semi annually, so 40 period. This is bond one. Bond two, there's 150,000. Zero coupon payment, zero. Present value. Is 29.5. So it's 29.5 percent of 1,000. So it's 295. Face value 1,000. Maturity in 25 years times two. So it's 50 period. So this is for your debt. Okay, this is for your debt. Next, preferred stock. Preferred stock got how many? 325,000. Okay, 2.5% preferred stock annual dividend. So dividend is 2.5% with a current price of 36 and par value of 100. So 2.5% of 100. So your dividend is $2.50. Current price, current selling price, okay, it's $36. This is the preferred stock. Next, common stock. Common stocks for 1 million. Okay, look at the information, focus on the information given to you. Uh. The next dividend payment, this is D1. Next dividend payment, right? So it's D1 will be $4.75 per shares. The dividend are anticipated to maintain a 6.25% growth rate forever. G is a constant growth rate forever. Okay. The, current, the stock is currently sold at 49.50. Next. Has a beta. Okay. They also give you beta 1.5. The return on market is 12%. The return on risk-free market is 3.5%. Okay, what is the company tax rate? So the whole thing, the company tax rate is 0 0.34. So if you realize on the common stocks, they give you two different information. You know to count the cost of equity. Okay. So stocks huh, is cost of equity. Yeah? You know cost of equity got two methods. Number one, you can use DGM. Number two, you could use CAPM. So now they give you CAPM and DGM. So in other words, you find both of it and find the average. Okay. So we leave stock to the last. Let's start with the first one. So the question call you to calculate the market value of the firm's capital structure. So after reading all this information, uh, from top to here, so long. Okay. Now, first thing first, they want you to count the market value. So guys, when you do exams, in the exams, they count this kind of question. 
do exactly like what I do. Write down all the information first. Then you won't confuse. You won't get the wrong info. Okay? So to solve the market value, count one by one. Okay? Count one by one of the market value first. So bond one. Bond one, 10,000 units. Each one, 1197.3. One, one, I already showed you the, face, the present value just now. So this will end up with 11,973,000. Bond 2. 150,000 units. With a present value of 295. 44,250,000. Preferred stock. Preferred stock 325,000. Each stock $36. Another 11,700,000. And lastly, your common stock. 1 million unit. Each unit $49.50. $49.50. Okay. Four different capital structure add up all of these together, you get your market value. One one seven four two three zero zero zero. Done. Market value done. The next part is of course calculate WACC. Okay? WACC. So this kind of question usually carry 25 mark questions. So next question here. Find WACC means you know find the weightage and then the uh, cost of ACC one by one. So to start it first, you need to find the cost of debt one, which is bond one. Okay, cost of debt of the bond one. Okay, so bond one, you know the information just now. I give it to you guys. All right. EV plus minus 1197.3 FP on form 1000. Okay, payment 50. All right, your period is uh, 40. 20 times 2 equals 40. Compute your IY. So you will get 4%. This 4% is for semi-annual. So for one whole year, or your for your cost of debt, you will be 4 times 2. 8%. This is before tax. So for your convenience, it's best for you to find the after tax also. Which is 0 0.08 times 1 minus the tax rate just now is uh, how many? 34%. So this will give you 0 0.058 or 5.28%. So this is the cost of that one. Next, find cost of that. Two. Present value plus minus 295. Future value is 1000. Payment coupon rate, zero coupon bond, so no payment. Okay. Period is 25 times 2, so 50 periods. Uh, compute IY. <laughs> compute IY. So this will give you 2.47. Uh, This is for semi annual. So YTM or cost of debt to is 0 0.0247 times 2. Okay, 0 0.0494. All right, then also count the after tax. 0 0.0494. Multiply by 1 minus 0 0.34, you get 0 0.0326.
or 3.26%. Cost of debt too. Next, preferred share. Preferred share formula is very simple. Okay, you know, count the cost of preferred share is equal to dividend divided by the selling price. So dividend just now is 250. So current price is 36. So your cost of your preferred share is 0 0.0694 or 6.94 percent. Preferred stock. Now, the last section is your common stock. Or cost of equity. So I told you two set of information given to you. BGM. BGM, which is price at time zero equals to B1 over R minus B. R is a cost of equity. Okay. So if based on the BGM, all right, you can calculate what is the cost of equity first. So DGM is 49.5. Equal 4.75 R minus 0 0.0625. Okay, so R is equal to 4.57 divided by 49 plus 0 0.0625. So your R of your DGM is 0 0.1548 or 15.48. Okay, repeat the process with CAPM. CAPM method RE is equal to RF plus beta times RM minus RF. So risk free 0 0.035, beta 1.5, market premium 12, 0 0.035. So with the CAPM, you get 0 0.1625 or 16.25%. So two different number. How? Okay, find the average. Okay, find the average. 0 0.1548 plus 0 0.1625 divided by 2. So you will get... 0 0.1587. Okay. 1587. Okay. All right. This is the official one you use. So now you've got everything already. You've got your cost of liquidity, cost of preferred stock, cost of debt one, cost of debt two, everything there. So now you can calculate your WACC. So very long question here. So WACC, okay. Your debt one, 0 0.0528 multiplied by 11,000, uh, 11,973,000 divided by 117,423 plus debt two, Plus preferred stock. Plus your cost of equity. So the total of the WCC, WACC should be 0 0.2022 or 20.22%. Such a long question, but a very, very easy one. Okay, a very long question, but it's a very easy question. All right. Okay, from 
here all the way to here okay so i hope that you are clear with this all right you are clear so this is basically the cost of v1 multiplied by weightage of sorry weightage of v1 cost of v2 after tax ah uh, this is all after tax already so if no never do the tax yet you can one minus p here okay v2 this is cost of paper stock weightage of paper stock cost of ppp weightage of ppp Can? Can or cannot? Can follow? Cannot follow? Very good. Okay, good to know that. Let's move on to our theory question now. Mm -hmm. So theory question, I won't go on this so in depth because these are some of the sample or potential uh question to me that will be coming out. Uh, No, that that might be coming up for your final. So there are a lot more of all these uh, theory questions that you can propose there, or you can uh, revise. So I don't want you to feel that this is the question that's going to come on your exam. So just briefly talk about it. Okay. So you see, question number one, they will come out like this. Discuss two reason each why share price of acquiring firm. Okay, acquiring firm. Why the share price for acquiring firm tends to decrease, while the target firm tends to goes up. Okay, acquiring firm and target firm. So, what is the relationship between these two? Acquiring firm is the firm that buy over a target firm. Okay, so target firm will go under them. Ah, uh, so why when the acquiring firm gain and target firm their price will drop? Very simple. Number one, because of overconfidence. When acquiring firm buy over, they are confident that they are able to turn over this target firm into their own and make more money from it. So usually it's overconfidence. Okay, overconfident that it will run better than the initial firm management. Number two, out of the blue, why a firm being acquired by someone? Okay, very simple. Means this target firm might have no more chance or no growth opportunity anymore. They cannot grow, so they need someone to carry them. Okay, they need someone to carry them. And lastly, usually when a firm acquires someone else, it's more like a rescue mission. It's like they know the target firm is dying. Ah, uh, firm B is dying. So firm A go and buy over firm B to help them to make to make them uh, sustainable for the shop being, okay? So they could uh, not go into bankrupt or not uh, or not disappear. So these are the three reasons how or why an acquiring firm shares drop. Okay. On the opposite, why a targeting firm shares goes up. Okay. The reason is pretty simple. Number one. They are usually acquired by bigger firm. So when this big firm, they usually profitable and stuff like that. So when you take over, you you are part of them. So you as a shareholder in a target firm suddenly feel feel better. Everything feels to be elevated. So acquiring firm are usually bigger. All right. So in the same dollar of profit, the target firm reflect a higher percentage of return. Uh huh. They gain a high percentage on return. Okay, number two. Because when they are being acquired at time, they are competition. So what happens when competition? Basically, supply and demand. This will push up the price of the shares. Okay, not to forget and counter attack. What is the counter attack? The white knight, the golden parachute, etc. All the defensive techniques that the target firm use to prevent acquiring from getting it. 
this is all to boost up the share price to make them being more expensive. Okay. Number four, expectation of better management. So most likely this targeting firm is not doing very well, maybe because of the management is being lousy and so on and so forth. So when they're being taken over by a bigger firm, the expectation on the management will be better and this drive up the share price. Okay, and of course, there are many more other points that you could use to elaborate why an acquiring firm shares drop in price and the targeting firm price will go up. A lot more other reasons you can use those. Again, okay? depending on you. So I'm just showing you some of it. Okay, so the next theory question here we'll be discussing will be on describe two circumstances it would be appropriate for a firm to use different cost of capital for its different operating division. Explain one typical problem that an FM might encounter if he tries to estimate the cost of capital for different division. So, give two reasons why a firm will separate the cost of capital into division. Why not overall? Okay, why not overall? Very simple. One simple reason is because different risk. Different division having different risk, which causes a very huge difference on the um, on the potential here. So if that's the case, they cannot be one lump sum. Okay, you need to separate into different entity. All right. Number two, in such a case when all of these are having a different risk, okay, when they're having a different risk, but the problem is if they all put into under one, okay, they will go under a single further rate. So a standardized further rate will not be fair for three divisions with three different risks. Why? Because the riskier division will get higher investment. And this will cause issues. So by right, high risk investment supposed to be minimalized. Okay, low risk one should be maximized. So it could bring a balance. But if you use a standard single further rate for all three divisions, although they have different risks, okay, it will cause the division which, which has a riskier investment to get higher money being invested into it also. So they are they are not being uh, balanced off on the risk. The risks are being uh, in, uh, how to say amplified further. So this is the this is the issue here. Okay, two main reasons because of different risks and because of having a single hurdle rate for a different risk division, it will cost riskier division to get more investment. Okay. And then this will end up being an unprofitable project. Ah, it will end up becoming not profitable anymore. So the next one is explain one typical problem that a finance manager might encounter if he tries to estimate the cost of capital for different divisions. So what happens if you want to estimate different, different costs of for capital for different divisions? The problem here, the uh, cost of capital of each division will not have its own security traded in the market. So in other words, it's not transparent enough. So it's very, very hard to observe the market valuation of each division. If you talk about overall, the evaluation of overall is easy. It's transparent, it's easy to see. But when it comes to division, there are a lot of internal information, which is very hard to be observed. Okay, so it's going to be very, very difficult to value by division. Okay. Now, basically, when I come to theory, I'm talking all about the uh, merger and acquisition only. So don't think that this is the only thing will come out in the exam. It might be other things. All right. So happen this is being shared by your module leader only. Okay. Even question three here is on merger and acquisition regarding synergy. All right. They tell you to explain synergy. So synergy only happen after. A merger and acquisition already 
happens. Okay, a synergy will only happen when the present value of the merged entity is greater than the sum of the present value of the target in acquiring company before the merger. So a synergy formula means value of A plus B minus value of A and value of B independently. So the mark will be this much also in final or lower. Uh, usually in the uh, finals, uh, each question is 25 marks. Okay, it's in your slide for that being set to you in your lecture. Uh, your marks is uh, 25 each question. So here there are some questions 15 marks, some questions 10 marks only. So depending on uh, combination, that means this is not a complete question. So like question 3 here is only 15 marks. So maybe this is only a partial of the question. You have part B for like, most likely. Okay, uh, for the first question, just like 12, 25 marks, that's a full question. That's how a full question should look like. All right, so back to question three here. Synergy means the value of the combined uh, merger and acquisition versus the value before the combine. Okay, if it's more, all right, then that's the synergy. If it's lesser, no synergy. Okay. So discuss four ways company could achieve synergy by undertaking mergers and acquisition. So how company has a combined value higher when they are compared to when they are independent. So there are a lot, a lot of uh, ways to this. So one of the most, one of the most uh, simple one is strategic benefit. Okay, strategic benefit means they share their competitive advantages. Okay. Strategic benefit, it could be marketing gain, combined advertisement, all right. It could be also transfer of technology. Okay, transfer of technology. It also could be uh, cost reduction because of economy of sale. Go to economy of sale. Okay, it could be uh, complementary resources, they are sharing resources. And so much more. Okay, so much more. All right, it could be so many other things. Okay, so these are some of the samples we need. So elaborate it. All right, the question tell you here is 15 marks, three marks on synergy explanation. The balance 12 marks will be on the four way. So each way you propose is three marks. If one of this is one mark, then give an elaboration two marks, three marks. All right, and this is the last discussion question that we'll do for today.